One of the ones that comes to mind, um, Maria, and this is like I've, I've found over the years I've developed these kind of, um, oh, I, I want to call them passions, but they're not really passions. They're, they're kind of, they're more struggles, really, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> and I think it's the sort of thing that you What find- are you going to say then? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so I think. You, you kind of you kind of know in your heart that you know they're, they're real small percentage kind of ever going to work kind of the kind of things, and one of them that I started off with very very early in the day was the idea of doing um, of doing um, um, video memoir. So the idea is that is that yeah. one of the things one of the things that a lot of people talk about, and I've heard them talk about it at things like funerals or when they're um, reflecting on you know um, relatives or friends that have passed or whatever, that one of the things I really miss about them is their voice. Yeah. And like we've all got photo albums, and now we've got you know we've got enough digital photo albums to last you know five hundred million lifetimes, yeah. probably you know on the one phone. Um, yes. But but remembering to record people's voices and and hear their oh, story, wonderful, the sound yeah. of their voice. So I ended up putting some. I ended ended up interviewing my my mum who. Um, who unfortunately now is at a more a much more advanced stage of Alzheimer's, but she was just getting early symptoms a few years back, and it wasn't what really motivated this. But I sort of thought to myself, it'd be nice to have one of her stories down there. But I don't want her to sit there saying, "Yes, and my, you know, yes, and Granddad, when well, when they went <laughs> down from Cobram, you know, with the truck and the, you know, like I didn't want that sort of story. I thought, what was what's a really interesting part of Mum's life, and for and for her. It was 1960 to 1960 to 1962. She spent two years working for GTV, GTV Nine in Melbourne um, at Bendigo Street as, oh. as as a member of their art department. Now Thanks. she was she was one of the first females employed by you know television and was only what you know 56, so only four years out from the inception of it. Anyway, it's an amazing story. She knew Bert Newton and she you know oh, Brad Kennedy was a bit funny and aloof and stuff like that. So we just ended up just recording that little section of her life, and we fortunately she'd kept some photographs and stuff like that. So it's her telling the story. It's there's a bit of narration in there because we've got we found the actual GTV Nine letterhead. That um, that showed her appointment, her acceptance into the job, like all those little knick-knacky memoiry things that right. we all kind of keep, and yeah. they stay in boxes, you know, mm-hmm. or they stay in photo albums or whatever. And I think, you know, particularly for our, um, you know, obviously you and I doesn't include us, but one day <laughs> we'll have grandchildren, and wouldn't it be fun? That, you know, they're gonna they're gonna want to look at this stuff on their mobile Absolutely. phone. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that was. So that's my. Sorry, that's my. That's my. My passion. Yeah, my passion tragedy. It's, I don't think it's ever going to work, but I, I love I the idea of it. And for and for us, but I think also for someone who's who's not a sighted, not a sighted person, then those those photographs and, and visual things that people keep by routine, I think to some degree they're excluded from the history of those sorts of things because you can't. They can't access it. Yeah, I think that um, you need, you need an audio describer. It's just yeah, such a great. To come back to your point, I love that. 